Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you a little bit about what the selection tools do. We have the small selection tool, which is white. It's also called the direct direct selection tool. Uh, I call it the small one. And we have the big one. Originally, because in Adobe Illustrator way back when, this was a smaller icon. So we have the big selection tool and the small selection tool. Now, uh, these do two separate things. So let's just create a square, for example. And let's just fill it as well. Let's just take that attributes. Okay, so... Um, the big selection tool will select the whole element. So if we click on the point here, it doesn't matter, it selects everything. If we click on the line, it selects everything. The center, everything. Okay, and we can move it around as one whole element. The small selection tool, or direct selection tool, selects individual elements. So if I click this line, you can see that these points aren't blue, they're white, which means that line's been selected. So I can transform this any way I wish. Same with the points. I can click and drag. And you see how that point is blue? It means that this one's been selected, and we can select this one. Same with this one too. Okay, so we can transform the object independently. Then if we go to the big selection tool, we can then click on it and drag it around. So the big selection tool is handy when it comes to moving large elements around, and also selecting things like points, for example. So let's just get a point. Oops. Let's just paste that point in. Zoom in. So if we want to move a point around, we want to use the big selection tool because it takes the whole element. If, for example, I wanted to move that with a small one, uh, we're going to get some problems. Okay, So always use the big selection tool to move elements around and use the small selection tool to select independent items Okay, or, let's say, lines, for example. You could do this, for example. You probably wouldn't want to because it would break your block. But you see how you can like move points around, make things much simpler. You can move lines around, whatever. Um, also, we have something called grouping in Adobe Illustrator. So let's go big section tool. I'm just going to get rid of this. Hit, select it. Hit backspace a few times. Backspace a few times. So, if I click on this item here, now you're expecting if I click on this just to get this outline because that's just one element. Well, it's not because it's part of a group. Okay. So in Adobe Illustrator, you have groups. And to do this, we go to Object, and then we have Group and Ungroup. You also have the shortcuts here. So you have Command-G to group it, and you have Shift-Command-G to ungroup it on your keyboard. Okay, So Shift-Command-G on your keyboard. So this is part of a group, and your pattern, when you get it from us as an SVG E pattern, these elements or these blocks will become will be grouped. And that just ensures that when you move it around, you're not going to lose any bits of information. So to ungroup this and to access individual elements, because it's going to take ages if we go in and like you know select this and then you know we select this as well and then that and then if we move it ah oh, look it might not work so we want to get access to these individual elements but we can't because it's in a group so what we do is we click big selection tool we select the whole item we then go right click and then we go ungroup and what that does is it creates individual items now the problem is I've grouped this a few more times so just keep going so for example We've ungrouped it once, so these two are now separate items, but this is a group. So you can have nested groups. So let's just go right click, ungroup, and now, there you go, that should give us access to individual items of the pattern. Ah, but look, there's still some grouping going on, so now we have access to these ones. It's because I've grouped this badly. So just click on the element once again, right click, ungroup, and now, there we go, we should have access to individual items in here. You see? So if I move this now, Okay, it's all becoming quite a bit of a mess. So that's why we group items, okay? We want to ensure that this notch stays on that panel because that's how we match up our sleeve block. And we also want to make sure this bottom panel, which I've cut out in a previous tutorial, silly me, is also uh, in that group. So you can basically use the big selection tool to select an item. Hold down the shift key. You can add to that selection. If I were to just click and then click somewhere else, it wouldn't queue it up. So holding down the shift key allows you to add up your selections. And then you can right click and then click group. So now that is a group. But once again, look, I'm missing bits. So let's go back. So let's just click on that element there, hold down the shift key, click on the outline of our block, click on the lower outline, and let's click on this line, this line, and this uh, text here as well. And then we're just going to go right click and then group. And when we drag it away, we're maintaining Okay, we're keeping all those points, these important bits of information, and we can get rid of all these redundant bits if we so decide to. Okay, so that's a way that you can basically edit your block using grouping. And then let's say, right, you know, I want to move this back in now because I finished my block. Obviously, they're two separate elements. So, big selection tool. Click on this. Hold down the shift key. 
click on your block, maybe add the grain line, right click, group. Okay, and then now it's one big grouped item. Same with this one. We can right click, ungroup. What does that give us? Click on it again. Okay, so this one's in a different group nesting. So we want to basically group this outline and maybe these two points as well. So we can just click and drag over those two points, get the outline as well, and then hold down the shift key, click. And now, see these are grouped. Just go object, ungroup. And then they're individual items. And maybe we want to ungroup these as well, for example. Yeah. And you can also go edit undo or control Z on your keyboard and that will go back through your um, actions and con shift control Z will go forward through your actions. Okay, so really important about grouping and ungrouping. Okay, let's go group. And there we have it. Perfect. Yeah, it sometimes has some issues. But that's fine. Let's just file save and then close file open it back up again. If for some reason Adobe does group them for you without you wanting it to, then just simply save the document, close it down and open it up again and your existing groups will remain. I'm not sure why it does it, it's a glitch and it's a bit of a pain. So once again, big section tool, ungroup, ungroup, maybe move the elements out that you don't want, oops, and then you can basically group. Okay, really simple. Uh, it will take a little bit of time to get the hang of, um, but you know, just play around with it, have a little bit of a go. Also, um, when it comes to the direct and uh, or the big selection tool, if you click on this, you'll see you have some little arrows here, and this is basically free transform. That allows you to free transform your block, which is a really bad idea because you're going to break your block because it's no longer going to be the measurements that you originally asked for. So be careful not to do this when moving bits around, okay? If you hold down the shift key, it will constrain it, so it will lock it, okay? It will no longer be a free transform, it will expand and decrease. This is not a form of grading, we do not recommend this as form of grading at all, okay? We'll get, probably get a lot of people asking us about this, but you can't grade using this system. You have to go back, create a block with the measurements for that size. Let's say this is a 10, you want to go into an 8, you can't just do that, you have to go and design it in the lab. Um, also, so if you click on this and it's a group, you also, if you not on that point, but hover away, you'll see a rotation. And clicking and dragging allows you to rotate that block. This is really handy when it comes to, let's say, you know, compressing or you know, lining your pattern pieces up so they take up the least space when it comes to printing. And you can move them around. You can also rotate them again. It's completely up to you. If you hold down the Shift key, it will lock it to the horizontal, vertical, and uh, diagonal as well, which is really handy. Or free transform without holding down the shift key allows you just to do it free transform. Okay? Uh, yeah, also you can select the whole thing here. You can then, you know, rotate, for example. You can lock it with the shift key to diagonal. And you can move them around. It's really, really helpful using these tools. Um, what else? Okay, so the small selection tool. Yeah, so essentially you can't do that rotation or anything. It's just simply to select individual elements. You see that? You pick up individual aspects, elements, okay? I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit of a tricky one, which is probably why I've left it towards the end. But have a play with it. And also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below in this tutorial, and we will try and answer them as best as possible. Um, better than leaving an email, because uh, it means that everyone can share that information and have access to it. Okay.